Hello, I'm Nils. In this video, I'll be talking about a method of reducing the levels of PFAS or forever chemicals in our bodies. This video is not intended as and should not be taken as medical advice. PFAS or PFAS stands for per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These chemicals can cause damage on various levels, including altering our cholesterol and liver enzymes, lowering birth weight in newborn babies, and changing our immune response to vaccines. They've been found to increase our risk of some cancers, including prostate, kidney, and testicular cancers, and several others. PFAS are found in hundreds of different household items, ranging from waterproof fabrics to non-stick pans. Common sources include food packaging, fabric treatments, stain-resistant coatings, and contaminated drinking water. And I'm not just talking about, obviously, contaminated water in war zones or whatever. I'm talking about the water that comes from the tap in our kitchens. Other common sources of PFAS include cosmetics, cleaning products, fast food containers, microwave popcorn bags, pizza boxes, candy wrappers, nonstick cookware, paints, varnishes, and sealants, personal care products, stain-resistant coatings, water-resistant clothing. According to a recent study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, journal Network Open, one way of reducing the levels of these harmful chemicals in our blood is by donating blood. And donating plasma appears to have even more benefit. Of course, it's also good to reduce our exposure as much as possible. Things I'm doing along that line include drinking only purified water and having air purifiers running continuously in my home and also in my car whenever I'm driving. One group that can have a very high exposure to PFAS is firefighters because of the high levels of chemicals in the foam that they use to put out the fires. If you're ever in a community where there is a house fire, I would recommend leaving, if you can, until the firefighting is completed because during the firefighting operation, a large number of chemicals are released into the environment and the atmosphere. According to the authors of the study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, in this randomized clinical trial of 285 firefighters, both blood and plasma donations resulted in significantly lower PFAS levels. Plasma donation was the most effective intervention, reducing mean serum perfluorooctane sulfonate levels by 2.9 ng per milliliter compared with a 1.1 ng per milliliter reduction with blood donation. A significant difference. Similar changes were seen with other PFAS. I haven't donated blood for a while, but reducing the level of contaminants in the body seems to me to be one of many good reasons for doing so. So I'll be setting up my next appointment for a blood donation soon. It's a little unsettling in a way to realize that the reason donating is reducing the chemicals in our bodies is because they are in our blood, which is then going into the blood supply that is given to other people when they need it. But obviously people do need blood transfusions sometimes to survive. In closing, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Do Not Age. I take several of their supplements, including NMN, TMG, berberine, calcium AKG, glycine, and NAC, hyaluronic acid, and a type of Fucoidin called CERT6 Activator. For a 10% discount on the products on their website, use the discount code PATHWAYS in all caps. Doing so is also a way of supporting this channel. You can also support me if you'd like by donating through Buy Me A Coffee using the link buymeacoffee.com forward slash Nils Osmar. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.